Welcome to an activity called the Urban Game. Through this game, we are going to simulate what changes occurred during the Industrial Revolution. So you are going to need a couple of things. So go ahead and click to the next slide and you will see what you need to get set up for this activity. The year is 1700 and the nation is England. Our scene begins in a rural village. In this case, this will be your paper. So for this activity, you will need pencil, only pencil. You will also need two pieces of eight and a half by 11 paper laid side by side. This could be printer paper, it could be regular notebook paper taped side by side. So to begin, you are going to set up your village that we are going to sort of add to throughout this game. So first you need to draw a river across your paper connecting east to west. There is a compass on this slide for you to see if you forget your cardinal directions. And the river should be about a half inch wide. All right, so go ahead and draw your river. Now that you've drawn your river, you're going to draw the following. A wooden bridge across the river, four roads originating from each direction, 10 houses, one church, a cemetery, a store, a pub, a coal mine, and let's add a bunch of trees all over the board. All right, and if you need a key to see how to draw some of these things, you can use the key on this slide as well. Life here in village England is similar to other villages across Europe in the 18th century. Change traditionally comes very slowly. People generally moved at a much slower pace and had access to very little information outside their village. Three out of four people were rural and lived in villages much like the one you will be constructing. Home life and work life were closely integrated as most work was done in nearby fields. Every member worked from sunup to sundown. The homes of villagers were small with inadequate light and ventilation. All members of the family slept in the same room and sometimes even shared living quarters with livestock. Life expectancy was slightly over 40 years of age. Most people married in their teens and had babies before they were 20. One baby out of three died before their first birthday. Only half of them made it to 21. England was divided into social classes based primarily upon wealth. Most were poor farmers, a few were middle class, a small few were aristocrats, and usually owned large tracts of land in the English countryside. Land was the source of wealth, livelihood, and well-being. Having enough land to produce adequate food, or to produce enough to sell, or even rent, was the key to survival. The main occupation of England was farming. Most English peasants or farmers did own their own land, however small. Villages were connected by a system of dirt roads that became almost impassable during the wet season. As a result, transportation was often slow, and trade beyond your village was not easy. Most English farmers never visited any place further than 25 miles from their birthplace ever. Finally, for fuel, there were two sources, firewood and coal. Nearly every English village had a coal mining operation. These mines employed a small number of village dwellers, especially in the winter. Over the next 100 years, a revolution as significant as the Neolithic Revolution will completely change life in your little village. Some historians believe this revolution is the most fundamental in human history. We will experience some of the changes throughout this game. This revolution would become known as the Industrial Revolution.
Okay, now let's get to the rules of this activity. Make sure that you follow these rules carefully or this will not work. First, you will listen to a story on the progression of society during the Industrial Revolution. Then, you will be creating a city based on the story. The story will be divided into different scenes and each scene will be read only once, so listen carefully. At the end of each scene, you will be given instructions on what you need to add to your village or city. Use the key as your guide. The pace will quicken as the story progresses. Try not to fall behind. I'm looking at you perfectionists. This is not about creating a work of art, but about trying to keep up as best as you can. All right, so let's get to it. Scene one. It is now 1745. England's geography is unique in that no section of the country is more than 90 miles from the sea. And there are many navigable river rivers that crisscross the countryside. An enterprising young capitalist, that's you, decides to invest money in the construction of a canal. The profits are astounding. This new revolution in transportation reduced the prices of raw materials and reduced the cost of transportation dramatically. Coal can now be transported from the mines to the towns for half the price of horse wagon transportation. Since you invested your money, you made a tidy profit. Build one nice home anywhere on the map you would like it to be. Scene 2. It is now 1750. For a variety of reasons, soap, diet, sanitation, etc., there is a population explosion in England and your little village. The cursed bubonic plague which for centuries wiped out your village has been virtually eliminated due to the disposal of sewage in the canal and in the ocean. Add five houses. Scene 3. It is 1760. The people of your village need a bit more food and goods to meet the needs of the new inhabitants. Coincidentally, a number of other noteworthy events occur around 1760. First, a number of new mechanical inventions for farms are developed. One is called the seed drill, and another is the horse-drawn cultivator. Also, farmers begin to experiment with new, more productive farming practices like crop rotation, new fertilizers, and new livestock breeding techniques. Consequently, farm production is significantly increased. Add five more houses. Scene four. It is now 1773. A man named Richard Arkwright invents a new machine that can spin and weave cloth a hundred times faster than could be done by hand in a farm. He calls his new machine the water frame. Since the water frame was large, a special place was needed, and the first factory for producing cotton cloth was built. Add one cotton factory on the riverbank. Don't add any smoke to this factory. Then add five houses for workers. Scene 5. It is now 1774. Workers are needed to work in this new factory. Machines have taken the place of people on the farms, and the enclosure acts have forced people to move to your town that is now becoming a city. Add five houses, one church, one pub, and one store. You may draw additional roads and one additional bridge. The profits from the first textile factory are enormous. New factories are built in your community. The early owners of these factories called themselves capitalists 
because they had the capital, or money, to purchase the raw material, the building, the water frame, and pay their workers a fixed wage and make a profit. Add five new factories. These must be on the riverbank because they need water power. And then... Scene 6. It is 1780. Unemployed workers from surrounding areas flood into your community looking for work. Although wages are low, they look attractive to starving families. Housing is in great demand, and for the first time, a new kind of housing is constructed called tenements. Here, dozens of families reside under one roof. Add five tenements. Scene 7. Scene 7. It is now 1781. More workers need to live, eat, shop, drink, and worship. In addition, boys were the only ones to be formally educated at this time. And then only the very wealthy attended school. Since workers work six days a week, the only day of rest was Sunday. Add one store, one pub, and one church. Also add one school for boys. Scene 8. Now it's 1782. Workers work long, hard hours in the factories. The average workday begins at 6 a.m. and ends at 9 p.m. There is only a 30-minute break for lunch. After work, exhausted, stressed out, workers stop at their favorite pub for refreshment and relaxation. Alcohol begins to be consumed in record amounts. Add two more pubs. Scene 9. The year is now 1783. Workers are barely eking out a marginal existence. Still, there are a few families whose lifestyle is comfortable, if not luxurious. These are the large landowning farmers and factory owners. Handsome manor houses are built, and some are lavishly filled with expensive art. These new rich can now enjoy some refinements of the rich. Food, servants, furniture, education, clothing, carriages, etc. Add two large special luxury homes. And note that from this point forward, trees may be removed if you need some. Scene 10. We move now to 1785. A man named James Watt invents a new machine called the steam engine. It allows factories to be built away from the river. The main business in England is still textile manufacturing. Add 10 factories with smoke. Add smoke to all other pre-existing factories. Also add one nicer house since people continue to get rich. Scene 11. The year is 1800. A man named Henry Court has just invented a new process that makes it possible for coal, which is fortunately in abundant supply in England, to be used as the primary fuel in the new iron industry. Consequently, your town is thrust into the new age of heavy industry. Add two coal mines and a new iron bridge to replace the old wooden one. Scene 12. In 1815, we see the coal industry flourish. There is a great demand for coal now. Home heating, fuel for steam engines, for the production of iron. Although in the 1700s coal miners were adults, now the typical workers are children between the ages of 8 and 14. 
The work is dangerous and terribly unhealthy. Children become victims of black lung, explosions, and accidents. Their growth is stunted as they spend most of their 14-hour day stooped over. They are malnourished and unable to exercise or eat properly. Add one cemetery. Scene 13. The year is now 1820. The existing dirt roads cannot accommodate the heavy industrial traffic. The steam engine is used in the creation of the railroad. Add one railroad line connecting your factory district to the outer coal mining region. Scene 14. The years pass. It is now 1837. Using steam engines and iron, and soon steel, British manufacturers introduced power-driven machinery in many industries. People used machinery to cut and finish lumber, to process foods, and make other machines. Some new inventions and innovations had important byproducts that turned into separate industries. Then, someone discovered that the gases that coal released could be burned to give off light. During the 1830s, London and other large towns became the first to pipe in gas to burn streetlights. Soon, all around England, hundreds of towns used gas to light streetlights and homes. Draw streetlights lining your business community streets. Scene 15. We move on to 1838. The working conditions in the factories continue to worsen. Working conditions in both of these areas were appalling. Many workers contracted the deadly factory fever or white lung disease. Other workers were injured on the job in factory accidents. There were no protective railings around huge moving machines. Children, weakened from lack of sleep and food, often stumbled into machinery and were ripped to shreds. Women with long hair that came undone often were caught in machinery. Regardless, if you were unable to work, you were fired. There was no health insurance. There was always a daily line of unemployed workers waiting to fill vacant jobs. Add two hospitals and one cemetery. Scene 16. It is 1842. There are some advantages for many of the urban dwellers. City life is quite different from country life. For the small but growing middle class, a new cultural life is available. Museums, theaters, operas, restaurants, plays, and concerts are made available. Before, only the wealthy elite would attend these events. Add one museum, two theaters, and two private schools. Scene 17. Scene 17. In 1845, there are no pollution limits or controls on factories and businesses. Windows, walls, even trees are covered with layers of soot. The river that once flowed through the quiet village for hundreds of years is now unfit for drinking, bathing, or laundry. A new disease begins to take the lives of people. Malignant tumors in people begin to grow in large numbers. Black lung is on the rise. The average life expectancy for the poor is now 30 years of age. Your city is overcrowded and shrouded in factories. 
the noise, the loss of privacy, loss of family unit, shatters the peace of the old way. Suicide rates double and triple. Add three more cemeteries, one jail, and three more hospitals, all to accommodate the victims of urban life. Scene 18. By 1850, new machines continue to take the jobs of workers in England. The enclosure movement continues to take the jobs of many farmers. Thousands of people move to your city in search of jobs. Add 20 houses, 5 tenements, 2 stores, 1 church, 5 factories, 1 pub, and another huge, nice What you just experienced was a simulation of the changes that occurred during a time period known as the Industrial Revolution. What you might have noticed is that things happened very quickly, and almost too quickly for people to be able to keep up. So this is what life looked like before we started this activity, and this is what things looked like after this revolution. Now it's time to reflect on your experience. On the back side of your map, answer the following questions. One, as the mayor of the city, name and describe three issues you are going to have to deal with. Two, what problems did you have while developing your city? Which scenes were most difficult to incorporate? And three, what would you do differently if you had the chance to create this city again? Be specific. I hope that you noticed the difficulty of planning out a city during the industrial say planning with quotation marks because people in England and other industrialized countries didn't have the opportunity to plan ahead. This happened so quickly that they just sort of had to roll with the punches, much like you did in this activity. This explains why some cities like New York or London look a little bit overcrowded and maybe disorganized. At the time that these cities developed, there was no such thing as a city planner. In fact, we have jobs like this today because of the things that we've noticed in retrospect after this event in history. Once again, we see the long-term effects of incredibly important historical events that still impact the way that we live today. <laughs>